Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan, and on this grey, wet and windy September morning, I'm at Hunger Hill CL campsite, a little farm site near Grimsby, with the very, very latest from Auto Trail, the new XL. And this is the 690L model, one of four in the range, and the one I've picked for this full review. Now you may already have watched my overview of the new XL range. If not, I'll put a link up here. But I've chosen this 690L for a full road test, so I've been spending a couple of days living in it. And, well, what about XL? Well, the key thing is that it's a narrower bodied vehicle, 2.24 metres wide, rather than the typical 2.35 metres of a standard coach-built motorhome. So just that bit more manoeuvrable and easier to drive on narrow roads or in town centres. And the other key thing, of course, is that it's on a Ford Transit. And not just any Ford Transit, but one with a lowered chassis and the wide rear track. You can see from the stance at the back of the vehicle that the rear wheels are fully out at the side of the bodywork. If you don't like the black cab, don't worry about that. There are other options. In fact, there's a silver, two greys, and a rather nice metallic blue. And those colour choices are at no extra cost. Another thing that doesn't cost extra is the big overcab sunroof. But these alloys, these black alloys, 16 inch, they are £995. The price of this model starts at £65,582. And some more stats for you. Well, like all XL models, it's a three and a half tonne maximum gross weight, 3,500 kilos, and that gives you a payload on this vehicle of 570 kilos. Width, I've mentioned, is 2.24 metres. Overall height, 2.88 metres, and overall length, of course, being a 690, it's 6.9 metres long. The front fog lights, colour keyed bumper and all sorts of other bits and bobs are contained in the optional driver's pack which we'll come on to in more detail later on. But the key thing is that the styling of this van, the new overcab pod, the new graphics, these polyvision windows, it's an all new design from Auto Trail for 2024. These skirts for example, they're new, for these this groove in the rear wheel arch moulding. So a completely new design, as I say. Just taking a look down the offside here, again, you can see that there's not much uh, extra width behind the cab. You've got your mains point there, your toilet servicing hatch, of course, your fresh water filler, where you can put a pump in there if you uh, want to take water from an external container if you can't get to a tap, and your external shower point, that's a standard feature. Now the other models in the range all have a garage, which you don't get on the 690L, but you still get a large external locker uh, that goes right the way through to the other side. Water tanks, well they're both underneath and neither of them are heated or insulated. But the fresh water tank, well that's 100 litres and the wastewater tank is 70 litres and now with this nice T-handle for easy emptying and fast emptying too. I think Auto Trail have done a particularly neat job of styling the back end of this new van with this new low level bumper moulding, the round tail lights, all looks very attractive I think. Bike rack mountings are there so if you need a bike rack just get your dealer to fit one. And the reversing camera, colour reversing camera, that is part of the Lux pack and again we'll come back to the packs a bit later on. Looking along the near side, of course, you've got that second identical door into the space under the rear lounge. Oh, giving away the layout, haven't I? So under there, that goes full width across the van, and at its lowest, it's 30 centimetres high, and at its narrowest, 60 centimetres wide. 
and there's a main socket in there as well. Moving down the side, gas barbecue point, that's part of the Lux pack. And then your gas locker will take two six kilo cylinders, although the one around the corner, of course, will be slightly more difficult to access. Habitation door is linked to the central locking, but then that again is part of the Lux pack. If you have this upgraded door, complete with fly screen. Bin on there and this nice tall grab handle. And I think we might be needing this brolly today, although I might do a Mary Poppins and fly away if I do. <laughs> So on the roof you have a solar panel and the TV aerial. Well, you do if you order the Lux pack. And then, well I think it's time to go out of this horrible weather and inside the warm comfort of the motorhome. And you'll notice there's a nice low step for easy access. And inside, I'll notice that the way your heating's on, it's gas and electric and up to 4.7 kilowatts maximum output. Oh, well it's nice to be inside. And over the door not only have you got the whale heater and boiler controls, but you've got this new Auto Trail touchscreen and that gives you control over the lighting, um, you've got dimmer, variable dimming on the lights there as well, you've got your water with your pump, water heater, power shows the condition of the battery and then environmental tells me it's 21 degrees in here and 16 but feels much colder outside. So up front you have a half dinette to give you two belted rear travel seats. The table is a touch low if you've got larger thighs than mine you might have the table rubbing on your legs. But otherwise, it's a decent space. You've got the two swivel cab seats, plenty of light because you've got that really large over cab sunroof and the big MPK roof light as well. And that's the one where you slide the bar and you can open it as much or as little as you like. So that's a good feature. Lighting, well, you've got this mood lighting above the top cupboards, strip lights, um, one reading light with a built-in USB, but no reading lights in the cab. Useful coat hook by the door, and then on the windows you have the posh pleated blinds and this nice fabric surround. Unusually for a layout like this though, you can stow the table away, and it has its own cupboard next to the fridge. And now with the table stowed away, the front lounge does feel considerably more spacious. You will still note though that these over cab side pockets are, well, not that useful really because they need a deeper lip or a net or something so that when you go around the first corner, you don't get hit on the head by your caravan club site handbook or whatever. Anyway, um, back to the positives. I really like this unusual sort of tweedy grey fabric with the Auto Trail logo set into it as well. And this is quite a nice little space once you've got the table removed. As for storage, well of course you've got one big locker over the uh, half dunnet, but there isn't really any storage under the half dunnet because that's where the vehicle's habitation electrics are, including a lithium leisure battery, 70 amp hours. And then there's this drop front door that gives you access conveniently to your habitation fuses and so on. In any case, you won't be wanting to spend much time up front, perhaps dining there, but then once the plates are cleared away, you'll want to come back into this rear lounge and relax because this is without a doubt the 690L's star feature. 
it's a really comfortable and spacious rear lounge with triple glazing but big windows on all three sides and again a large MPK roof light above. You've got reading lights just in the two back corners and again those have USBs built in. TV, that's a £420 option, but if you have it, it's nicely positioned, sensible height, and it's a 21 and a half inch screen. So a good size, but not one of these stupidly large screens that you see in some vans. What else can I tell you? Well, you've got the same Moyer oak furniture, of course, throughout the vehicle, this nice tweedy fabric. And again, these fabric surrounds to the windows plenty of artificial lighting with these strips under the top lockers yeah it's just a really comfortable place to relax as for storage well you've got these top lockers all the way around the lounge and then your under seat space well part of that is your sort of external locker and that is well that's not really accessible from inside the motorhome but the forward part of both seats is accessible with these drop front doors now unfortunately at the moment they're mostly full of infill cushions but you can leave a lot of those at home if you don't need the third berth at the front which we'll show you a bit later on if there's just two of you then you have the choice back here of single beds or a double. Now if you want single beds it's simply a matter of getting rid of the backrest cushions. Now I suspect for most people this would be a matter of just stowing them in the cab. Fortunately they all press stud to their respective wall. So they don't end up in a pile on the floor when you're driving. And then you have two single beds, each 1.85 meters long by 65 centimeters wide. That's six foot one by two foot two should have noticed too that in the daytime when you're just using this as a lounge you do have these nice little corner shelves for your cup of coffee or your GNT. If you fancy something a bit more cuddly at bedtime well just slide out these caravan style slats pop in the shorter of the two backrest cushions from the side and then you have a transverse double bed, 1.91 metres long by 1.38 metres wide. That's six foot three by four foot six. You'll notice too that you're not sleeping against any side walls because you've got these ventilation panels all the way around. You can watch telly in bed, but wouldn't it be better if these slats came all the way forward and then you'd have an even bigger bed in which you could sleep lengthways. Yes, you can sleep lengthways like this, but of course there's a bit of, gap, bit of a gap at the foot, so it's not a full king size. Now, this is a three berth van, so you also have a single bed up front, a standard four travel seats, of course, remember too. And these infill cushions, which take up rather a lot of space in the underseat storage at the back, are required to make up the extra bed. I'll show you how. Undo this catch and this bolt. Then slide the seat base forward. Lift off the cushion so that you can flip the base over. That cushion then goes back. Then fold down this support leg at the front. Then add the table, folding out its leg, which drops down into the step well. And now you just need to add the infill cushions. 
One. Two. Three. So, you now have a single bed across the vehicle, 1.92 metres long, by 63 centimetres wide at the foot, and 88 centimetres up here at shoulder level. It's a reasonable occasional bed, but it does block the door, which is marked designated emergency exit. Hmm. And if you're wondering about the cab blinds, they're a £680 option. While we're on the subject of optional extras, I ought to tell you about those packs. So, we have the driver's pack at £1,975, and that includes power adjustable heated mirrors, automatic headlamps, front fog lamps, body colour side mouldings, heated front windscreen with low washer tank warning, the Trend instrument panel, locking glove box, colour coded front bumper, cab air conditioning, rain sensing wipers and high series headlamps with static bending, which I think to you and me are cornering lights. That's one pack. The other pack is the Lux pack, and that's £1,578. And that includes the 9.5 inch LCD touchscreen with radio, motorhome specific sat nav. So hopefully it won't take you down roads narrower than this vehicle's 2.24 metres. Um, it also includes the colour reversing camera which is selectable so that you can have it showing while you're driving forwards. Then there's the external gas barbecue point, the TV aerial, the solar panel, the Omnivent, the upgraded habitation entrance door with fly screen and loose fit carpets, cab and living area. On top of those features, this particular vehicle has the automatic gearbox at 1000 £860. So, if you ordered your XL690L to match the exact spec of this particular vehicle, you'd end up with a total of £74,235. Time now to look at the kitchen, and because this is a thoroughly British motorhome, you have a thoroughly British kitchen, and that means three gas rings on this Thetford triplex cooker and of course the combined oven and grill. Other features, well you've got a reasonable amount of worktop anyway because you've got this slot in cover over the sink but then a lot more worktop with this flap by the door and there's a convenient main socket there as well but that is the only main socket I could find anywhere in this van apart from that one under the rear bed in the sort of external locker. I would like a few more main sockets, maybe one up here, one in the front on it, one in the rear lounge at least. Anyway, back to storage and you've got this large drawer with a sort of two level bit for the cutlery, I quite like that. And then large cupboard down below, plenty of room in there for my famous coffee machine. Big cupboard up top and this new spice rack in trendy black with the matching matte black tap of course. Moving back also in black is the compressor fridge, 149 litres and that's again a Thetford unit. Big cupboards under the cooker and under the fridge as well. And then over on this side you've got a slim wardrobe, perfectly adequate for shirts and jackets and so on. And then underneath that is a shelved cupboard, plenty of room in there for more folded clothes. So to the washroom which of course is opposite the galley. Positives first, well there's plenty of room, shoulders and legroom on this swivel cassette toilet. 
And for once, you don't need legs like a giraffe because it's mounted at a sensible height. I really like these little shelves too, ideal for your shampoo and conditioner and all that sort of stuff. Got a really big mirror and an opening window and nice wipe clean walls. Plenty of room to get your face over the basin. But what I wasn't so keen on was when I had a shower this morning to wrap yourself around this curtain. It does at least keep the loo and the furniture alongside dry but it does mean you have a wet floor to mop down afterwards and the shower head itself pulls out and the tap doesn't seem particularly ideally placed and I said well I hand held my shower this morning and then afterwards well you've only got one drain in the shower tray so you will need to be parked nice and level. It's not exactly a power shower either, it could do with better water pressure. But I don't think we're going to have a problem with power on the next bit, because we're going to try out that Ford 170 horsepower engine. So as I suspected, there is absolutely no shortage of performance with 170 horsepower in a three and a half ton and relatively compact motorhome. It's got strong acceleration, it's a nice smooth power unit and the six speed automatic uh, complements it very, very well. Stability, well, this is an extremely windy day and we've been out on the uh, M180 and it was fine up to 60, 65 miles an hour. Beyond that, <laughs> it was a bit, but that's just the conditions today. It's, it does feel very stable with that really wide rear track it does make a considerable difference. And cornering, it does feel very, very stable too. So all around impressive on the road, uh, not too firm a ride either, F definitely feels more absorbent, uh, more absorbent than the average Fiat Ducato based motorhome. Um, and your driving position is good too, it's typical Ford, you sit a little bit lower, uh, car size steering wheel, so it, uh, it feels easy to drive. The, door mirrors are a, a good size with the double lenses of course you've got your reversing camera as well and not being quite as wide it does feel a little bit more maneuverable than perhaps your typical seven and a half meter and wider bodied coach built motorhome on the rattles front, it's pretty good. Yes, you're probably aware that there is a constant chattering coming from over behind me to the left somewhere. I think that's uh, from the folding worktop, which does seem to have some movement in it when you, when you touch it. So I think that's where the rattle is coming from. Apart from that, there's really very little conversion noise. And all in all, as, as ever, the Ford Transit seems to uh, perform well, especially with this 170 horsepower engine, which a lot of uh, other converters charge you extra for. To have that as standard is a bonus. And the automatic gearbox, well, at uh, just over 1,800 pounds, that's competitively priced too. When a lot of uh, motorhomes, the auto option is uh, three grand or more. Time to park up and sum up. Before I conclude this review, just a reminder that these videos are brought to you by MMM Magazine, Britain's longest established, biggest and best motorhome magazine, which you can buy in digital or print form from our website, outandaboutlive.co.uk. But final verdict, of course, 
on this Auto Trail XL 690L. Well, I really like the fact it's a bit slimmer. It doesn't seem to notice on the inside, but it does notice when you're driving it. I love the Ford Transit too, with the 170 horsepower engine and the automatic box and the wide rear track. This, this is a great motorhome to drive. But the star feature, of course, is this spacious rear lounge. What a lovely place to put your feet up and relax. It works quite well as single beds too, although perhaps less so as a double. And then the other seating area at the front, well that gives you your two travel seats, but it is a bit tight with the table in place. Just could do with maybe some alteration to the table size or the way it's mounted or just some detail there. In the washroom, well yeah it's a pity we haven't got a separate shower, but there is plenty of space to use the basin and the loo. And the kitchen, well that's hard to fault because you've got your oven, your grill, three burners, decent amount of worktop and of course that very large fridge freezer. Do consider too whether you'd actually use that third berth because it's not the best of beds. It blocks the door and the infill cushions you need really do take up a lot of storage and otherwise storage would be really good in this van. A lot a lot better than most camper vans. And also Trail see this van as offering a bit more than a camper van but appealing to a similar type of buyer. Would you consider this as an alternative to a camper van? Let us know in the comments below.